Today we will do the second meeting of the bird habitat lecture series and it will be done by our uh, division manager Savit Arjuna. He studies in Bhagavanagar College Kampa. Uh, he's going to give uh, some facts about habitats around our, our planet. So I'm giving over to Savit so uh, you can carry on. Thank you, Anas. Uh, good evening, everybody. I uh, hope you can see my screen and hear me well. So I'm Savit Arjuna, and I'm going to share my knowledge about bird habitats. Uh, yes, I know you learned about this last week, but bird habitat is a big chapter in birds. So why wasting time? Let's move on. So you already know what bird habitat means. The area with ecological and environmental characteristics where a species has adapted to find essentials. So you might um, get a question like this. Are birds restricted to specific habitats? Well, now you can get the answer. Birds can fly and seemingly everywhere, but they occupy specific areas or habitats that meet all or part of these essential elements. Ornithologists indicate that a bird's habitat is often a signature of its, of its identity. Give me a minute. Each habitat type has a specific composition and structure which a species is well adapted. The adaptation comes as shape and length of the bill, legs, wings, plumage patterns, and coloration. So as an example, you wouldn't expect to see a duck searching for insects in a tree. A duck would probably be expected in or near water. Its feet and bill are adapted to live in water. So when talking about bird watchers, they, are, they use habitat as a tool. Once you learn the habitat type to which species or group of species are associated, you will be able to eliminate other possibilities and identify the bird's use. So do you remember when I told you about essential elements of bird habitats? So these are those types, food, water, shelter, and nesting. When talking about food, food is birds eat is found in environmental in many forests. Whether fruit, nectar, or invertebrates, a bird needs physical attributes and specific behaviors to obtain food efficiency. Water. As other animals, water is essential to birds. Water can be superabundant at times, but scarce in other when water is scarce, the birds have adapted to obtain water from the food types they eat. Shelter and nesting. Birds have specific requirements for shelter and nesting. Some birds nest in trees, some birds nest in shrubs, cavities, rock walls, and even on the ground. So the shelter is also important as protection from predators. Now we are going to learn about another interesting fact in bird habitats, which is bird habitat types. So there are many types of bird habitat. Across the globe, there are a lot of each of which can support different types of birds and other wildlife. The most familiar and widespread habitat is forest habitat, which is also known as rainforest habitat. Rainforests only make the 6% of the world land area, but this doesn't stop them from being one of the most populated ecosystems. In fact, around 50% of world's plant and animal species live in the rainforest. 
the reason the rainforest is home to so many plants and creatures because there's constant access to energy, water, food, and carbon. So you might have heard about this. There are five largest rainforests in the world. The Amazon, the Congo, the Daintree, the Papua New Guinea, and Sapo National Park. The Amazon rainforest covers around 40% of South America, with more than half of it being found in Brazil. And it's home to a large array of colorful birds. So most of the birds in the world are forest birds, such as hummingbirds, owls, parrots, macaws, pigeons, peacocks, eagles, and many more. So now you can see there are three birds in this slide. The first, the, these, all, these three are all presented or mostly seen in Amazon forest. So the first one is blue fronted Amazon. The next one is Hyacinth Mako. And the last one is Crimson Taurus. And uh, I think you uh, talked about, talk, I think we talked about more than enough about forest birds. So let's move on to the next habitat. So the next type of habitat is non-forest habitat. It includes areas covered with shrubs, scrubs, or a combination of several vegetation types. For example, um, take your own garden. Is it a forest? No. Are there grass, bushes, or scrubs? If yes, it is a non-forest habitat for some uh, birds or some organisms. So let's discuss, discuss about some examples. So the first bird here is a dunnock. It lives in bushes. The second bird is short-eared owl. It uh, spends its habitat in grasslands. So, okay. So now uh, let's talk about another habitat, which is aquatic habitat. It is also known as water bird habitat. Aquatic habitats are areas that are permanently or seasonally covered by water. The vegetation covers various bare surface to grasses, reeds, rushes, stubs, or a combination of various vegetation. So now I'm going to tell you a main point that you should remember. Flooded forests are not considered as an aquatic habitat. We should remember that. It's a very important point. So we should think that's, that means before the flooded forests are not aquatic habitat. So in this slide, you can see two birds. The first one is the mute swan. But who is the other bird? Does anyone know who is that bird? Please tell me. Anybody? Okay. That bird is known as dodo, but unfortunately, that bird is extinct. I'll tell you why did it extinct later. So when speaking about this dodo, it is a flightless and native bird to Martis Island. Dodos are slightly larger than turkey. So they feed on crabs, nuts, fruits, and shellfish. So now I tell you how did they extinct. So the main reason for the extinction is uh, uh, in the olden days, the Dutch sailors uh, hunted them and eat them. So they were easy to catch. And that's why that bird got extinct. So let's talk about some more examples about aquatic birds, uh, kingfisher, stork, the Eurasian spoonbill, and there are a lot of more that I can't speak about. So let's move on to the next habitat. The next habitat, habitat in migration. Habitat in migration means habitat used during migration. Now, what is migration? 
Migrate means the move from one region or habitat to another according to seasons. Now talking about talking more about bird migration, it is one of the greatest wonders of the natural world. A huge variety of birds make their journey. In fact, roughly one in five bird species migrate. Migration is a huge of endurance requiring great strength and stamina. However, today bird face additionally threats caused by human activities. Hungry, exhausted birds may arrive at stopover sites only to find that it has been destroyed by farming or urbanization. Every year, millions of birds are illegally killed by hunters or collide with man-made structures. Power lines and climate changes is causing habitats to shift or disappear. So before winding up the session, I have one interesting fact that is to be discussed in migration. That is flyways. When traveling between their grounds, birds don't choose their path at random. They follow set routes that include suitable habitat where they can stop and rest and refuel along the way. Mainly different species share broadly similar routes which have been loosely fit into eight major flyways. Um, think about, think of them as bird super highways across the sky. So the first one is Pacific America. This is the Pacific America's flyway. This is the Central America's flyway. This is Atlantic America's, Atlantic America's flyway, East Atlantic flyway, Black Sea Mediterranean highway, East Asia, East Africa high flyway, Central Asia, and East Asia to Australia highway. So, what do we come at last? We have to end this session in sadness. Why? Because these beautiful creatures are being destroyed by us. Yes, we humans are destroying the color of nature. So like after 100 or 1000 years later, the world will be colorless. It will be looking, it will be like looking at a black and white picture. Now tell me, is a black and white picture more beautiful than a picture with color? Is it? No, the picture with color is more beautiful. So what shall we do? Think about it. We should protect these colors, these amazing creatures of nature. We should protect them, we should care about them and protect them for future. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Savit, uh, to share knowledge with us. And if you have questions, you can ask or put it in the chat box. Is, does anyone have any questions? There's, question in, no. there's a question in the chat box. What are the challenges faced by migrant birds to Sri Lanka? Yeah, there is a question. Uh, what are the challenges faced by migrant birds to Sri Lanka?
Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, so the problems, uh, so the challenges faced to migrate birds in Sri Lanka are uh, they are normally uh, included in storms, hunting, collision with man-made ob objects such as wild turbines and starvation. Uh, all of these are the same uh, reasons that I told. The all of the challenges are caused by us, we humans. So that's the main reason. Humans are the reason for. Uh, Yes, uh, you can ask questions or put, uh, put them into the chat box. Uh, there's a question, what are the famous forest habitats in Sri Lanka? So the famous uh, forest habitats in Sri Lanka are Singharaja, uh, Kumana, Yala, all those main uh, forests are the famous forest habitats in Sri Lanka. Uh, and there are some more uh, forests. Uh, yes, Anwas? Yes, you carry on. Uh, Nakas Forest, uh, the Randenigala Forest, Ritigala, Bandala, Gordon Plains, and the main forest in Sri Lanka. If you have questions, please ask quickly because we have limited time. You can also put them into the chat box. So I think today's meeting is coming to an end. So thanks everyone for joining to our meeting and goodbye.